My first guest tonight is Coolio, who just might be the biggest rap star in the whole world. He won a Grammy Award last week for Best Rap Solo Performance for the phenomenally successful Gangsta's Paradise. Thanks for coming on. Congratulations and welcome to our show. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Uh, in reading about you, you were a smart kid as a young guy. You, you were very, very good in grades. In fact, didn't they accelerate you through grade school? Yeah, well, I skipped a grade. I skipped a grade. My mother um, read to me quite a bit. Um, we played Scrabble. Mm -hmm. you know, we played cards. We played chess. We played all kinds of games. And um, she encouraged me to read. And there was a library, like uh, four houses away from my house. There was a, there was a, it was a small library, mm -hmm. but they had lots of books. So I got the opportunity to opportunity to um, learn how to read at an early age and I probably started reading at around age seven. I used to read the freeway sign. And did that come yeah. easy to you like when you were in the first and second grade? Did that did, did it come real easy to you? Yeah, yeah, it was real easy. When I was in third grade I was reading sixth grade. Is that right? Yeah. And which grade did you skip? Mm, sixth grade. Um, I, let me ask you about that because I skipped one too. I skipped second. And I found that it was neat. You, you, you know, you really think you're kind of neat when you get to skip a grade because they tell you how smart you are. But then you get to be 15 years old and all your other guys are 16. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and socially, I was always behind. Was that true for you? As yeah, well? I was smaller, too. You're what? I was small. Oh, small? Yeah, I was a small kid. So, you know, every, everyone was bigger than they were a year older, too. So right. That made it a little bit more, a little harder. So, um, it's not that hard, though. I mean, if I... If I had been as, as smart as I really thought I was, then <laughs> yeah, it, it wouldn't have really been that hard. You know? <laughs> well, you said you were little. Did, yeah. did, did they bully you a lot? Did other kids bully you, pick on you? Yeah, kind of, sort of. You know, for a while, until I got to um, junior high school, and then I just started fighting back. You know, when I started fighting back, and then they... They stopped bullying me. And, and that's all I had to do in the first place. Yeah, yeah. So when did you finally yeah. figure out, you know, if I stand up to just, these kids? Just fight back and, and act like they act sometimes, you know. Just you, you be the bully. Initiate. If you, know, if you think they're going to bother you, then initiate the right. contact. And, you know, it, it worked. It worked. And I got respect and people stopped bullying me. You know, and, it's all about respect in, in, in the inner city. Um, it's a lot of false pride, though. You know, a, 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 lot, of, a lot of the the uh, respect that you think you should have when you're, when you're a young kid in the inner city. It's just um, something you learn from television or something you learn from hearing someone else talk about how tough they are, what they would okay. or would not do in a, in a given situation. And kids listen, and people don't realize that kids listen to everything and they hear everything. So, And let we, me ask you, like if they hear stuff on TV or on the radio, do they believe it? Do they take it as gospel? I don't think, I don't know if they believe it so much but if they see so much of it and hear so much right. of it then they start thinking that it's real and they really can do it you know and uh, especially with television look look um all the guys with the cars and the money they get all the, the, the nice girls right that's right um um the guys with the guns always win i mean all these things they and they've been watching these things and hearing these things for all of these years, Since it's like being programmed, like it's like yeah. being a computer. Yeah. I mean, if you keep feeding a computer something, then eventually that can, that okay. If you keep feeding a computer stuff, uh, crime reports, then eventually that computer probably is going to be. You can turn that computer program into an uh, well, the a computer, crime expert. The, the, computer, the, the computer you know? will continue to regurgitate crime reports there for as long as you keep there putting you them in. You see? Okay. So well, let me ask you here about this thing called respect because that's well, a, that, that's a big word with the younger generation right. today, and especially with African American kids right. and minority kids. Mm -hmm. And it always seemed to me that if you were going to respect another man or another individual. That individual had to possess some character or some characteristic that you would respect. Yeah. You know, like, you know, I have respect for you as a man who has accomplished something in music and achieved goals. You know, yeah. that's easy to respect. You know, but, but, how, but how can you how can you ask for respect if you really haven't developed any skills or done anything that would that, that would command other people's respect? It's funny, but because you use so, the term fal you use the term false respect, you know, yes, yeah, it's, it's false pride was yeah. what it is. They they have this sense of pride that is warped. It's warped be because their sense of reality is warped. Um, unfortunately, a lot of kids in the inner city respect violence. Um, I don't know what it is. I, I can't really explain it because for some reason or another, uh, uh, the guy that can fight the best 
Okay. He has uh, everybody follows him, or the guy that um, has all the money, they follow okay. him. Sure. The guy with all the money probably has all the drugs. So everybody, he's respected because of what he has or an ability that he has. And see, you don't have much. Hey, in the old west, you they see? respected the gunfighter with the most notches on his see, belt. Okay, so that thing. was ever thus. So it's the same. But let thing. me ask you here about: Was there ever a time that you respected violence? Um, or were turned on? I tried. On? I, tried or, 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 I was turned on by it um, for a time, and, I, and, I, and I, until I saw a real, real taste of it. See, we used to fight. We used to fist fight. Yeah. And that was our violence. But now they shoot. And they kill mm -hmm. all the time, and it's it's common. Kids don't. A, a lot of kids don't have much respect for life. You know, I, I even know I know some people. You know, they're in jail now, but I know some people that that were doing like assassinations for like five hundred dollars. You, you know, you understand what I'm saying? Taking I know exactly a life what you're saying. for five hundred dollars. Yeah. I I couldn't. I had no. I have no concept of that. Cause see, I was raised in a different time. I was raised. I'm a '70s kid. I know. Plus, a, you also you know, said you had a mom who read to you and played exactly. games with you and exactly. fostered in you a, a respect for education exactly. and for reading and for writing. Okay. Well, and a respect for people and a respect yep. and a respect for for women and a respect for for mm -hmm. my elders. You see, because mm -hmm. I was taught all you had to know these things or you would get a whooping. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> a whooping. You know That's saying? exactly for right. For real, a real one. You know, and you know things have changed so drastically that I, I don't even uh, I don't even understand a lot of the kids today, and I I really wonder how what I'm going to do when my kids reach 15. Yeah, I, I hope I'm ready. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm trying did, to prepare did myself. Did you ever? For did you ever? You were in the Crips for a while, huh? Well, I not in a minute. Not, I, I, you know what? I, I ran with some Crips that that was so hard, they were so crazy. That after running with them for a couple of weeks, I didn't want to be a cop no more. I didn't want to game bang no more. I started. I really um, immersed myself into to rapping. Yeah, after and, that. but but what turned you off about gang banging? What do, was I there? saw? I saw them do some things that I, I couldn't get with. I mean, I saw them hurt some people, and that yeah. the people that didn't even do anything. Like I said, I wasn't raised like that, so their their sense of reality was warped. They thought that that made them tougher or that made them more respected mm -hmm. and, and you know it just made me throw up <laughs> you know what i'm saying I, I saw some guys hit a guy with a hammer in his head and, and right there in front of me and you know i'd never seen anything like that so when i saw that i was like oh they might do me like that one day yeah you know what i'm saying so i, I couldn't get with that and i started rapping i um i had my mother sent me um to northern california to live in about 80, about 79 mm -hmm. or 80, something like that. And it just was a different, it was a much slower pace there. And, you know, um, and probably drugs, the, weren't, drugs weren't rampant yeah, on the streets. And, 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 you know, and the insanity different. and the pressure of exactly. Los Angeles and especially South Central. Exactly. Huh? Let me take a fast pause here for commercials. We're chatting tonight with Coolio. The uh, Grammy Award winning CD is called Gangsta's Paradise. The toll free is up and running. We'll be right back after these messages. We are with Coolio tonight, the Grammy Award-winning star. Here is Cindy on the toll-free in Tampa, Florida. Hi. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm fine, Cindy. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, hi, Coolio. Hi, how are you? Fine. How are you doing? I'm fine. Uh, congratulations on your Grammy win, first of all. Thank you. Um, my comment is uh, I have a 10-year-old son, and um, I wanted to buy him your CD for Christmas. Uh, he's a big fan, okay. and I listened to the CD at the store and found that some of the lyrics were um, a little offensive. And I wonder, uh, what is your feeling on the impact that your lyrics might have on young children? Well, well, well to, to give Coolio a chance to really properly respond, could you give us some indication of which lyrics you did find offensive? I think it's only fair. Um, gosh, to tell you the truth, I really can't remember which lyrics in specific, but I know well, that Well, then you can't have found them that offensive. I, I can I can help you with that. Okay. Um, okay. This is one way to do it. You take the song. You take buy tape. Don't buy or, or or you can buy a CD. Take the songs that you will let him listen to on a tape, and then give him the songs that that you want to listen to. And the songs you don't want him to listen to, don't put them on the tape. Is there material on CDs that you have done that might be inappropriate for a ten-year-old? That a ten-year-old might not be able yeah, to quite grasp definitely, it. Definitely, okay? definitely, because I, I talk about everything, and I talk about things that are real. Unfortunately, some things that are real 
aren't suited for a 10 year old to listen to. I don't let my kids listen to everything. So I understand totally how you feel. And there's a way to do that. I just explained it to you, a way to do that. Or you can let him listen to those songs and explain to him what they mean, and then that will give him a better understanding of life. But, you know, it's up to you. Yeah. Um, well, I just want you to know that I am a big fan, and it's been amazing um, to see the wide range of people that are your fans. I work in a hospital, and some of the surgeons that I work with are big fans of yours. <laughs> so. Yes. That's, you know, been really neat to do see they, that. Do they play Coolio in the OR, Cindy? Yeah, they do. <laughs> no, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> you had no idea, did you? <laughs> no, I had, it. I had no idea. Where, where are you? Tampa, in Florida. Tampa. Okay, mm -hmm. if I ever need surgery, that's where I'm coming from. <laughs> <Tampa, Florida>. Um, <laughs> yeah, also, I wanted to say that um, from watching the interview, I really have been impressed with your integrity and your personality. And I think that um, a lot of young children, such as my son, might enjoy uh, listening to some of the things you have to say. And I wonder if you have any future plans to, um, uh, you know, do an interview during the day where maybe children can watch. Um, actually, I do quite a few. If you maybe let your son watch Rap City sometimes or maybe watch uh, MTV in the daytime, I do a lot of things with, with, both, with both BET and MTV. So I'm quite sure you can catch me one day or another. Also, Nickelodeon. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Also, Cindy, since you've been so nice, I'll put you on hold. If you give us your name and address, I'll send you a complimentary video cassette of tonight's program. You can show it to your son. Oh, thank you Hello. very much. You're very welcome. I appreciate welcome. that. Nice talking to you, Coolio. Thank you. Okay. Cindy, Thanks, stay um, on hold now and get, we'll, we'll get your name and address, okay? okay. Thank and then we'll, you. then we'll come to your house. No, we will. Thanks, um, <laughs> Good night, Cindy. Thanks for night. watching. Uh, let me ask you here about the early performing you did on the now defunct radio station KDAY in Los Angeles. And from reading about that, it was an experience that you enjoyed greatly. And, and you were much younger, 1980, 81? Yeah, definitely. Um, there was a, a program called the Performing Arts Program and that was run by a guy named Roy Kaufman who worked for um, KDAY. And he, he just went into the inner city and found kids that had any kind of talent, if you could dance, sing, rap. Right, talent. If you, were, if you had enough savvy and enough wit to put together a stage show that you could present and make people interested, he would let you perform. He'd always give everybody at least one shot, though, and then if you weren't, if you yeah. were just, yeah. you had to be really bad not to be able to perform. Yeah, I got you, though. I got you. Know you. What I'm yeah. So, um, I learned so much. I really, really learned the value of a live performance uh -huh. if you're a performer. Yeah. Um, back in the days, if you weren't good live, people didn't buy your records. Now, it don't matter. If you got good videos, people buy your records. If you got, you, you can be the does worst. That bo does that bother you? That, yeah, it does. Yeah, that, it does. that, 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 that bad performance me. can't yeah, be because purchased? Because it, it doesn't make any sense. If, if you're going to do it, you got to do it right. And if you can't do it right, then you shouldn't be doing it. Even if you're making money from doing something, money's, money's not the... At least for me, it's not. It's not, it's not what drives me to do music. I, I, I do music because I love to do music. I couldn't imagine me not doing music. I mean, not anymore. And if rap didn't pay, I'd rap for free. Because I did it for so long for mm -hmm. free. For KDAY, for nothing. Yeah, for nothing. I, well, I did four, five shows a week for nothing. We used to catch the bus to go do shows. And then after the show, we performed with like the Fat Boys and Run DMC and Houdini yeah. back in the days when they were real hot. Yeah, yeah. And we perform with them, and then we go get on the bus, and people would be leaving from the show. They'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> "I mean, hey, yeah. you know, I'm on the bus. Oh, yeah, you know. I mean, it was no, it was no shame for me to to do anything that I did for rap. I rapped at a hold on. I rapped for a grand opening of a church's chicken. <laughs> <laughs> for real? <laughs> Can you believe that? I believe it. On sixty sure. second of a month. <laughs> <laughs> really? He rapped for nothing at the opening of a chicken store. We got, a, we got, we got like a chicken. Twenty-eight store. buckets of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it was just to, to have the chance. To you know, like in, in 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 mainstream music, mm -hmm. what determines whether you're successful or not is, as you say, whether you're any good. Now, in mainstream, Sinatra's good because he's got a great voice, and Rosemary Clooney because she's got a great voice, and uh, and. Uh, 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 Mary, uh, uh, Mary Natalie Wilson. Cole because she's got a great voice and Whitney Houston and so on and so on. Right. What makes a rapper good? Because voice isn't the defining of what's good in rap, but rather it's the rhythm and, the, and, and, and what the message is. So what, what, makes that, what makes that good? What do you have to have to be a good rapper? 
Originality. Okay. Originality, um, good rhyme schemes, good hooks on your songs, and a strong driven drum on your beat. It has to be, you know, you have to be different. You have to um, set yourself apart from everybody else. That's You've proved that you don't have to be violent all the time. Or nah. You know, you can, you can be yourself, but, I mean, some people fall into a niche. And they, you know, so, like some, like, for instance, the Ghetto Boys. All right. If you listen to a Scarface album or a Ghetto Boy album, and they weren't talking about violence, you'd be disappointed. Okay. Because that's, they bring those kind of, you know, they make you see those kind of things. They, listening to a Ghetto Boy album is like watching, uh, watching a, a horror, like watching a horror flick or watching a, a, a mystery okay. uh, thriller or something like that. Okay, so, if you buy a Ghetto Boy, you know that that is what makes yeah, them click. Exactly. That's the kind of story that they tell. Exactly. And if they don't tell that story, you're not going to appreciate exactly. the album. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Just like Ice Cube. If you'll hear Ice Cube um, talking about somebody or or uh, uh, or being uh, uh, being political, right? Or you know, talking about something serious, then you you won't buy Ice Cube. Album. Let me you ask don't you want something. Ice Cube. Why does about rap have such a bad movie? rap? Like, if you listen to the rap on rap, the negative, is that, it's that all the people who do rap are morons. You are hardly a moron. I interviewed Ice-T. He is hardly a moron. Uh, we had LL Cool J. He, you are all very intelligent men. You are all accomplished people who have brains and, uh, you, you know, you're dumb as foxes. All of you. You're bright guys. Why does rap have this negative all the time? I think because it's just like anything else. You have, of course, you have some... Uh, Dumb talk show hosts. You have yes, dumb you do. rappers. <laughs> You're looking at one. You have <laughs> dumb football players. You have yeah. every. I mean, you know, anybody can anybody can be stupid. And unfortunately, when sometimes people that want to attack something, they'll pick. The they go out yeah. and find somebody stupid and hold he or to, she up to speak. Yeah, him or her, yeah. It's exactly to speak for whatever it is they're fighting against. And they'll say, look at this, and they'll show him on TV, and they'll say, okay, here's this dumb guy. He's a dumb rapper. Look at him. Let's, let's, let's ridicule him. And see, see, and then he'll be there like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I, yeah, we're going to blow up everything. I'm killing everybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then he'll, feel, he'll fall right into it, and then the people that are watching, the two million or three million people that are watching, they'll be like, well, that's all rap rappers for are done. That, that, all, you know that's rap for you. Let me do a fast break. We're talking tonight with Coolio. The CD is called Gangsta's Paradise. Back with you and Coolio on the toll-free after these messages. With Coolio in the studio and on the toll-free, Connie in Bonham, Texas. Hi, and welcome to CBS, Connie. Hi, Tom. Really enjoy your show. Thank you very kindly. Um, I basically, I just wanted to ask Coolio if he'd done any work in specific organizations to help keep kids out of gangs, or if he knows of any national organizations that are doing that kind of work. That As a matter of fact, he's very active here in the Los Angeles area with a number of projects. Yeah, we just started, um, me and my fiance just started a program called the uh, Heritage Begins Within Foundation, and it's going to be a program geared towards helping inner city kids get caught up in what's going on with the world today because as you know um when you when you live uh, well when you're mostly when you're poor and this can be this can be any inner city kids i'm talking black white latino whatever it don't matter um you you get behind on technology and a lot of kids don't have pcs at home i mean that's right it's like if you if you have a television then you should have a computer at your house i mean if you're not if you're not caught up on that then you're way behind so anyway um, we're going to create a program called um, CFK, Computers for Kids, and we're going to get companies to donate computers. Maybe, uh, maybe you update your system right. this year and you don't have any use for your computers just sitting in your garage where well, you bring it to us and we'll find a home for it and then we'll teach, go in and teach that kid how to use it. Also, we're, gonna, um, we're trying to raise money now to um, build a studio where, and th now check this out, this is a really good idea, where kids can come in and actually get studio time to learn how to be recording artists also to learn how to be engineers we'll we'll have um interns to come in and they can actually learn how to work in the studio mm -hmm. also in order for you to record in the studio it's going to be based upon your merit at school if you get a good report card then you get a you get x you, amount of hours in you the get studio. in right and that's how we're going to do it if you have it. a bad report and card you, you don't get, get nothing in. exactly right. yeah. so that's i'm trying to um I believe in doing things in a semi old fashioned way but with a with a a year two thousand and fifty twist, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think that um But in other words, unless you merit it, 
you're not going to get it. Exactly. It's not going to be. Exactly. Where, by the way, where do you think government programs in inner cities fall down? Uh, wh the people that run them uh, don't really care most of the time. They don't really care. They don't um, put the money in the right areas. Um, they waste a lot of money or they embezzle the money because people are crooks. People are, uh, you know, I don't know what it is. People always want something that they didn't work you for. You know, we had a drill sergeant in, in basic training who said, never leave money on your bunk because cash will make a thief out of your best friend, and he was right. Exactly. You know, it's unfortunate to have to say that, but it happens to be a truism, you know? Exactly. So if you, if you have a government program, and uh, maybe that government program is dealing with a million dollars a year, or say a half a million dollars a year. I try two and you a half million, three million. million. You gotta have 10 people to watch that money. 10, 15 people to watch the money. You can't let two, three, four people be in control of the money because they'll figure out a way to start stealing it. And that's think, just... I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, do you think maybe that the people in the government programs, I mean, the, the lower ones that actually work one-on-one -on -one with the people, do they start out not caring or do they become calloused after seeing so much pain and so much suffering that they can't do anything about? Well, or, see... There, or that they can't affect on a one-on-one -on -one basis? See, there's no such thing as not doing anything about because if you are working with 10,000 people a year, say, so to speak, okay, if you got that much money, you can literally work with that many people a year. Mm -hmm. If you reach three, that's three people you reach. Because, I mean, it's not your money. I mean, it, it, you, the money is, the money is there for you to help somebody. You're spending other people's money. There you go. The money is there for you to help people. That's what you're supposed to do with it. You get paid. They get paid salaries, though. Believe me, when you when you run a found, when you run a foundation or you run a program, you you gotta pay somebody. You gotta pay somebody to run it. What you do is you make sure that the money is being channeled to the right areas, and um, they can do it. If other places can do it, I mean, I've been I've been to other countries and I see the way they do things. I don't see people on the street that much. But I don't see. That we need to uh, find a way to make it work better than it does. Well, now. we need to find a way to eliminate the bureaucratic middlemen between the people who need the money and the people who are who are who are. Uh, 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 the ones with the big expense accounts that go out for their three martini lunches instead. <laughs> it's only two now. <laughs> Any, oh, it's a two. <laughs> yeah, it's only, it's only two. Connie, I'm short on time. Thank you for calling and thanks for dotting us up tonight. Thank you so much, Tom, and thanks, Coolio. I really enjoy your music. Okay, thank you, sweetie. Okay. Listen, you've had you've had some wild jobs, didn't you? Didn't you check uh, security at LAX for a while in the '80s? I was a uh, I was a pre-board screening uh, uh, guard, I guess. I don't know what you call it anymore. You I, I sat. I sat at the. Were you the one machine. who sat with the machine where yeah. we put the luggage on that yeah. went through? Yeah. Uh huh. I was so asleep. When they look so. in them in that screen, what do they see in there? What 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 can you see inside my suitcase? Can um, you? I, like if, just any metal. If uh -huh. it's something metal or um, like if, if I got a full bottle something of something electronic, I can see the wires and I, or I can see a solid. Like if you had a knife, I could see the outline of the okay. knife. Okay, but if a computer, you could see wires see and stuff. It. Yeah. How about if I have a, a full bottle of vodka? Can you see that? Yeah, you can see the bottle. Oh yeah. You can't tell if it's full though. Uh huh. But you can see the. Do, bottle. do you stop for that? Eh, you never no. have. <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't. And then didn't you work in a fast food for a time, like a Jack in the Box? I worked at Jack in the Box, McDonald's. Burger King, Big K Pizza, Taco Bell. <laughs> Shall I go on? What, KFC, is that on the KFC. list? KFC. <laughs> I worked at KFC for about three months. Is that right? Mm -hmm. What is it working at like, one of those places? It, it's a job. Mm -hmm. It's a job, and it's, um, it's a job that you can get in three days. You can go and say, you can go and fill out an application, they can call you, you can interview, and you can be working the next day. And, you know, it's um, fast food, fast money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? They, the way they do it now, they don't give them any hours. They give them 10 hours a week. They don't have to pay any benefits. They don't have to do anything. Oh, and that's yeah, how they yeah, play them. Yeah. And, you know, they play the kids like that. They play them. Let me ask you a question, though. If a, if a, I'm, not everybody's going to be a Coolio. Not everybody's going to have this kind of talent exactly. that you've got, okay? Yeah. And somebody's, some, some kids are going to have to do the fries and serve the burgers and, 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 and that kind of if they stick at it long enough, do they have a chance to move up in these organizations and eventually become store managers or assistant store managers where they can make a decent living for themselves and a family? Oh, yeah. If you're working 10 hours a week, then there's no reason why you shouldn't be going to school. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You see, the thing that I think that we need in this country to impart to young people of all, all races, I, I, this has nothing to do with, with race, but most young, or a lot of young people feel they don't, they don't have the respect for, you've got to start somewhere. 
you must like you started on the bus going to KDAY for nothing. You started somewhere and you kept at it and you kept at it. And I think that has to apply to every young person. You got to start somewhere, kids. See, everybody can be a doctor, lawyer, teacher, exactly astronaut, right. rapper, singer, talk show host, uh, right. producer, director. Okay, somebody has pilot. to be a janitor. Somebody has to be work fast food. Right. Some, but everything that you do should be a stepping stone. To, to the next. To the next. Level. Absolutely. Exactly. I, I've enjoyed this more than I can tell you, and I hope that you'll make us a regular feature of your travels through Los Angeles. For Thank sure you, sir. Thank you, sir. My great pleasure, okay. sir. Okay. Coolio is the guest. The, uh, the uh, CD is called Gangsta's Paradise. Back with Stephen Carter and Integrity in America. This is kind of a theme we have tonight. Okay. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs>